7.30 or 7.29. Uh, what do we have for additions? See, so the sound is going to be coming from up here. Are you guys going to be okay with that? Yeah. We've got the, yep. the table mics. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so the only addition I see is uh, no meetings. Minutes taken. Okay. Do we, Seth? Do, do we want to talk about maybe even now figuring out when the next garage meeting would be? Why don't we do that after we get to the end? Anywhere you want, but let's yeah, yeah. put a date now because it's before you know it. Hey, you okay. Got three. What? What? Somebody left their keys. They'll, they'll be back. It's Steve. Okay. They won't go far. <laughs> <laughs> Just one note and then go home. What realistic date for an open house for the garage? It'd be great if it was the middle of October. Um, uh, I don't know that might not be. So July. Okay. Why, why is that? Because it's snow plows? Because then we can put the wings on and leave them on. Oh, okay. Because October 5th is our last public hearing. Okay. Oh, would you want to do it before that? Yeah, I thought you had it like a couple of days before. Yeah, 9 yeah. 11 November is the next 2nd. one. November 2nd, we do. We've got one on November 2nd. Yeah. Right. We have oh, to. We because do. it has to be close yeah. to the. Uh, it has to be within 10 to days of the vote. Yeah. Oh. So there's one on November 2nd. I thought we were going to cancel the one on October 5th because it didn't make sense. Oh, I'm, I'm, okay, sure. We don't have the one on October 5th. Well, I don't have it. It's, it's, it's on September 11th. It's on, on the, here. Right? On the website, it doesn't oh, that's it wrong. September 11th and November 2nd. So September on, 11th and November 2nd are we have. On this meeting. Not October 5th. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so we'd have to have it so we've got well to have before it on, November. Does November. Oh, you want it. November 2nd. It has to be. Has to be within okay. 10 days of the vote. Okay. Can the public forum be a site visit? Is there any reason why we have to be sitting down inside? Can we do November 2nd at the garage? Ooh, November 2nd might be cold at the garage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not going to be in the garage very much. Not in any. Yeah. I, uh, don't think that's going to work. No. Why, why not do it beforehand? <laughs> do it bef a site a site visit at the garage it's at 10 and then come here. In the morning, though. What? So do it. It's 10, 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Is the meeting? Is the meeting? Nine yeah. o'clock at the garage. Huh? I was here from 9:30 to 12:30 on Sunday. Wow. <laughs> okay. So we had a separate. I, we had a really. I, Carl, we had a pretty yeah. good turnout. I, yeah. Oh, did you? Well, people ask a lot of good questions. Way more than was here. Yeah. Oh, I, nice. I'd say 18, what, 20 people. What, 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 about, what, about, what about what about what about eight what about eight thirty to. 9.45, the same day. That worked. Which one's that? On, on November 2nd. That would be awesome. That would be great. 8.30 to 9. This way, everything already be here. Either you come or you don't come. And then they can come straight here. Sure. So 8.30, November 2nd. 8.30 to 9.45. Okay. Good. And then the meeting oh, would good. start at 10 o'clock here, or wherever. Or wherever yeah. we're going to have it. Well, it's okay. supposed to be here. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Guthrie. Yeah, so, yeah, the bond payments decreased. That's what I thought. All right. So, that's the, done with the additions. Review of minutes, August 5th. Yeah. I have one addition and then multiple additions um, for the recreation board policy change there's no record of the vote uh, so i would add the motion passed unanimously and then for almost all the other votes it just says the motion passed and we have a long record of of keeping track of the votes in our minutes so i would ask that all the motions that say the motion passed say the motion passed unanimously with the exception of the one where there are the two recusals. And how are we doing this, Jen? Are you keeping track of these proposals? Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Is everyone okay with those amendments? Sure. Okay. It's fine with me. And then we got the email from, from Deb suggesting yes. some language to add. And yes. I that through that. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Oh. I think it's in the packet as well. Oh, okay. 
Right here. So she was suggesting. You, you have it. I'm sure I have I it. Yeah. Oh, okay. We could just attach it to here, but that's okay. What's that? Oh, it's probably it's, in here. It's within that packet. Right, right, right. Gotcha. Okay. So I thought, I thought all the suggestions yeah. you made there were yeah. fine. I got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Changes seem logical to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what were your other ones, Carl? Um, it was for the vote on the recreation board policy change. There was no vote recorded. Yeah. So, I wanted to record the vote that the motion passed unanimously. And then for all the other motions that just said the motion passed, to have that recorded as a motion passed unanimously, mm -hmm. which was the case except for the, the two where there were two abstentions, or the one where there were two abstentions. I make a motion we accept the minutes with the changes. Anybody else had any, any changes? Oh, we got a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Okay, the minutes are done. Okay. Uh, public comment. Nothing. This is Bill Powell, who is here. Park and ride EV charger discussion and poss possible action with Bill Powell. Good evening. Good evening. What's the discussion? I've come prepared to answer questions. Uh, given the time, I'd like to make best use of your time. If you have questions far away or I can give you a 101 on what's happened. Yeah, what's uh, happened? Well, the co-op awarded the town uh, through a grant in 2017, five years of first installed the yeah. two port station that's there. It's now gone offline about four months ago. And included with that was network service. Yeah. So if I'm in your shoes, and not to be presumptuous, but Really, a threshold question is, do you want to be in the business of charging the drivers for the use of the equipment after you know, replacing it, if that's your decision? So kind of to step into this, this is 240 volt level two charging. It's network service as it was originally installed. You're not under any obligation to pay that addition it's self-service that includes a revenue kind of component. So if you want to charge for the power that's being used, that's how you do it. Um, I can give you context. Uh, I had five members, including Town of East Montpelier, that were awarded in that same grant series, the same station by ChargePoint. Um, the East uh, Agency of Transportation location, Exit 9 Middlesex, was the only one that used the revenue system to cover their costs. So other members, including Rumney, chose not to charge for its use. So I don't want to complicate things, but I, I think if I'm in your shoes, we need to think about the actual capital cost. And Jen and Rosie and I have come up with kind of staying with an incumbent supplier charge point or going to somebody else. But if I'm in your shoes, I would just say you need to think about do you feel the need to charge? Because the upfront annual cost of that cell service for revenue capture is five to six hundred dollars. So you have to pay your power bill and some to catch that kind of difference. Um, you're going to need a lot of traffic. Right now, most of the power that's used at the park and ride is for lighting. And at the base of each of the fixtures in the park and ride per AOT, is a open 120 volt outlet. So anybody with a level one charger that wants to get free power from you guys, plug and go. Right. And 
there, there's an outlet right next to the station right now, and I know people use the, the level one. So in terms of options, you could get a level two charger with one port or two, and the, the quotes that Jen should have shared with you include a two port like it is now. What a two port means is if the load is rated at 40 amps and two vehicles are simultaneously charging, the level drops proportionately and the rate of charge is twice as long as it would be with one car and one charging support. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you can, you can have an non-network service and that will reduce your annual charge because you won't be paying that cell phone bite of five discounts. It's more than cell phone, it's a service behind that to manage your money. The, the, the vehicles that pay with a credit card, you want to recover that if you're charging for that service and that's what that, that nut covers. But you're going to have to cover $600 or more per year just to break it after replacing the station if that's your choice. So that's a quick kind of thumbnail of where I think the, the decision points are in this process. Right now the station is pretty much a brick. So is that? Yeah. So part of the background here is that that station stopped working quite a, some years ago. And we made, uh, it stopped working some years ago. What Jen and I have learned was Rosie is a member of the community came in in February yeah. and had been using it this year. Yeah. So um, could, could I finish the background? Sorry. Okay, so it stopped working some years ago and had been off for half a year or so. And uh, we, we looked at this and I did some research and uh, found that charge point stations are notorious for, going, for not working, for going offline. And uh, the select board at that time made uh, a decision that in principle that we would put in a dumb charger because uh, we decided at the beginning that we didn't want to be raising revenue from this. We just wanted to be providing electricity. So we wanted to put in a non-network charger. We looked at uh, some options and I contacted an electrician who was supposedly in the business of taking out charge point chargers and putting in non-network chargers. And, uh, and then he got back to me once, but then never, we never closed that loop, so that never never got hap uh, happened. I'm, I'm glad that it came back to life at some point. And, uh, and I wish I'd known that, I'd have used it more because it was offline for, for such a long time. But um, you know, it was an old select board. The select board is not bound by that decision. I don't even think we took a vote on that. We just could have sort of came to consensus. Yeah, you were, but, you were gonna look into getting a different one. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, no, and I had a specific point. one uh, that, that we were looking at, the, um, what, what, what you call it, Creek uh, charger. Uh, the, the one they have down at the co-op? Um, I don't know the product. Okay, okay. But, uh, and it has uh, a version with an extra sturdy cable that's good for public uses like this. Uh, so, so we're lo looking at that. But um, are you saying that, that this, um, this other quote, the NEV one or the AMP UP one, that that would be a non-network one? Um. The, I, I, I would say they made an offer a month ago or three weeks ago that I forwarded to um, Rosie and Jen. And yesterday, or yeah, yesterday, they, uh, oh, Friday, sorry, uh, I got a new version of that. So I'm going to say now they're offering a non network, less money. Um, so they made two proposals one with network and one without. Okay. Yeah, and so is there any possibility of, of just switching the charge point so it's not network and just always runs? That's an option. I would just say I have a, an additional option, which would be um, because the charge point, I believe, today finally came through a secure document that you guys should have had or may get once Rosie and Jen forwarded. Um, it looks quite a bit more attractive than their first proposal. So there's two options from charge point, one option from Norwich, and I'll just throw this out as an additional suggestion that the co-op has a separate grant source where we are able to offer members, residential members, uh, a non-network service, which is a level two, but one port, not a two port guy. So that would be uh, gratis. You'd have to pay for its install, but that's another option. So you can consider a charge point, rewrite of what they've done, go to another guy with a different product or uh, a residential level two that would, the issue with this notion that I'm proffering now is the base 
that the charge point unit uses has a certain bolt pattern, and to then undo that and to reconfigure something that fits what I'm talking about would be somewhat custom. I can envision, um, and I deal with all the contractors that do this kind of work, so I don't think this is a big lift, but I'm just saying out loud, it wouldn't look like the unit that's there now, which is a kind of monopole with two ports, and you have the ballot, the bollards on the outside to protect the device. So I can see it on the same footprint, but perhaps, if you know, electrically, when we have a member that has a pedestal where the meter is, just a simple structure with a backboard, that's all you need, with a little portico to cover the unit, to keep it out of the direct sun and weather. These are all rated outside duty, NEMA 4 duty. But, um, and I'm not saying this is the only option, but it would keep you out of the network, and the unit cost is worth seven bills, 700 bucks. I, we could theoretically give it to the town. Yeah. A two-part question. Um, do most small little park and rides even have this, have a charging station? And my second question to the select board and everybody else, do we even need to have one? Well, we we're trying to do it as a service. I understand. but it's, Ever since we built it. I, I understand, but how necessary is it to go through the expense, the hassle, or whatever, to even provide this when... People use it. This is part of basic infrastructure. Yeah. yeah. You have a parking lot, it. you put in an electric car. Especially charger. because electric car, electric charging stations need to be more accessible. Yeah. All over the United States. Yeah. And that's I'm the big problem with electric cars is you don't have charging stations. I'm not disagreeing. Not anyway. Bring up the all. question. And I'm going to get an electric car, so I'm Bill, there. Bill, um, you just said that you have a, a, an option. Do you know what the cost would be to the town to do that? Tom, the cost of the unit is gratis. You're part of a program where okay. you sign an agreement to share your data with WEC. Okay. But the street value would be about 700 bucks. 700 bucks. One port, 240 volt, residential unit, and it yeah. would involve the contractor putting in some sort of a structure yep. that is compatible to the footprint of what you got and would give the clearances that we need. But it's just an idea. I, I just want to make sure you have that on your list. No, that's a good. And but it's, it's a charger point in this brand, brand, right? No, this oh. is a new product that Wex is now promoting called Employee. Yes, yeah. this one. Yeah. Could you could you give us two so we'd have the two ports that we still that we have right now? I'll take your ask on your advisement, Carl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try. You know, there's some wiggle room, but um, it's typically one member, one unit. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do we do we need the two port thing? Um, I mean, I know what he's saying is you're drawing two ports. It's going twice as long to charge a car, right? Because there's the same amount of juice available. Well, there's the 40 amps. There's a rule of, of bathrooms when you're college house with a lot of people in it. Uh, if you have eight or ten or twelve people living in a house, if you have two bathrooms, you have almost no lines. If you have one bathroom, you have a line all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know how much use we get over there. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we if it stuff. works, if it works reliably, then we'll right. get more use. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And no, you know, I'm some, all over the reliable thing. Yeah. But he says it's a different brand, so maybe it is reliable. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, just to go back to the point that Carl made, and I, I don't want to disparage Charge Point. I think there's, if you read the trade, many of the national brands that have fleets of chargers have, you know, active availability problems. Yeah. You know, and I know you're an early adopter, and you're very familiar with the plug, all the all the apps that can tell you where stuff is working or not. But I think that the product, the ChargePoint's a global leader. They're a price setter. Their uh, business model is they'll sell you the equipment, and then they make the money on the network service. That's their gig. So the product I spoke of for the residential single port option is residential, no network service. And it's just as good, you know, electrically as the other guy. But I think, you know, you're putting something out. It's it's got severe duty access in the weather, 8,700 hours a year, and they don't last forever. That's just a fact of life. But I can say, of the five that I referred to earlier, including yours, the other four are still alive. I, I have access to the dashboard, so I know what's going on with those guys. Yeah. So I think it's very site specific as far as you know what happened here, and I don't have a diagnostic for what went down. I do know that I've been engaged with ChargePoint and 
They basically say, we can read electrically through the communication, but we can't make it work. So it's like something's bricked. Mm -hmm. That's about the extent of my technical knowledge and yeah. figuring out the cost here, sorry. Yeah. And even, even when it was working, then um, I don't know, a quarter of the time that I went there, it would not be working and I'd have to get on the phone to charge point and they'd restart it and it'd be a 10 minute process. And I would go through that because I wanted it to be working there. And usually after the 10 minutes, it would start working again, but it was trouble. But if charge point could just flip a switch somewhere and just have it always non-networked, then that's already there. That would be great. If it just but do we have to replace power. it? I, I don't know. No, the head needs to be replaced if you want to stick with charge point. Okay. That's a brick. Okay. That's what I've been told, and that's the best okay. information I have. Yeah, okay. So we got to replace it. And we don't know if we want to stick to charge point or not. Right. <laughs> I, I like the idea of you taking this under advisement of, of us. I like having two ports there. Okay. Uh, so it'd be great if you could take another look at whether there'd be a way to give us two ports. I'll take that. But, that but if us. not, we have to pay. Or, or we could pay $750 for another one. Have two of those installed, one of them one we pays for it. I don't see that $250. Box. I don't see that either. Are, are we going to charge or we're not going to charge? We're not going to charge, yeah. So, so the $750 one is the one that, that uh, Bill told us about. I don't think we have any paper on that, right? No, for you, it's new to us, and uh, you know, it comes well regarded in the trade, so I'm very comfortable making an offer, as I would any other member. And so you would just take that old one out and put the other one in? No, no, no. That's your contractor. Yeah. Going to scope, remove, yeah. install with a proper back okay. board pedestal. Yeah, and gotcha. Either one or two units. Yeah, yeah. got it. Yes? I'll make a motion that we use that $750 option and at least get the one charger in, get it working. Well, I'd say let's let's wait until we get more information from Bill and whether the second one's available and, and then let's look at the cost of the with two ports. Of removing with two ports. Yeah. yeah. And can I infer no network services, the general consensus? No yeah. network service means we're not yeah. going to charge. Okay, that's right. really good. That's that's a no network service part. means we can't charge in the future. Right. Oh, that's right. Because it's is not. there any rough idea what what this what this costs us from a from a, a power perspective? Well, it's a fair question, Scott. I would just say that, and I've provided data hourly peak demand for many months before the machine went offline. And you know, like I said earlier, the bulk of your cost is for light. Yeah. It's not a big, it's not a huge amount. How but, much is the bill? But it's really, it's really easy to see when the ch when the charger is being operated because the lighting is just a steady state load, and then when the charger shows up, it pops up, and you can see these hours that it's running, and you can infer. And if it were a network service, you would have a record: how many events, how many charge cycles, how many kilowatt hours got used by the cycle. Right. So right now it's kind of blind. I can read into the numbers and I can give you some order of magnitude. It's not a lot. And okay. It's not been anything since February because that's about the time right. the most recent signal came in to Rosie and the guy said, you know, it's not working. Make it work. And that's what we're Don't doing. we get a bill though every month? We'll, we'll get a bill for the whole lights for the lighting and everything. All of right. How much is that? But you, you provided us with some detailed information about how much it uh, was drawing at the well, park and ride as a whole. Right, more uh, for the years ago and, about and the patterns that I just described. I, you know, the dollars I leave to your team. Right. Yeah, huge, but patterns. you can see the kilowatt use. Right. Is what you're saying. Right. What, what is the bill? Is it $100 a month or $200? This is the line, 238 for electricity, 505. So what was that? So is that for the most recent bill? Um, Green Mountain is that? Green, Green Mountain Power? Green Mountain Power Green. is the... Yeah. yeah, but that's yeah, not... I don't know if it's that's, for the that's, that's North Mountain. Right. That's, that's North Mountain. That's, North that's North Mountain. Oh, here it is. Municipal Operation Street Lights. That's the 505. 505 bucks? Yeah. The most recent one. A month. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. top cheap. Um, I'm yeah. just going to say that's incorrect for this for the park and ride we're not charging five hundred dollars a month 
I wouldn't think that, that must be a Green Mountain or some other location because you'd have both WEC and GMP serving you. Oh, that's that's maybe a street light for the whole town. Right, that's a town okay. and street light. Okay. And that's Green Mountain Power. Power. Street light. Okay, so, I mean, is it? That's Green Mountain Power. I, I infer that because I don't yeah. think you guys have any of our security lights except here at the school. You have three around here. Yeah. Yeah, no, we wouldn't see that bill. But, but we don't get WEC power to the parking ride, do we? That's exactly right. No, that's where. Oh, that's okay. Where. That's, okay. We serve you. Okay. Yeah, and I provided these data, and I reiterate, most of your cost is the usage for the lighting, yeah. not, yeah. The, not the yeah. EV charge. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we were just trying to put a number to it. Sure. That's all. Yeah, it's we, not this one. So. Okay. All right, so we're going to so table this till we get more information. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? okay. With and, you and we'll probably Absolutely. I, I work yeah, with you guys. You tell me what I need to know, and I'll, I'll follow up, as I said, Thank see you. if we can offer two yeah, four A units, and then with the revised charge point offer, I really have, I'm, I'm on vacation, so I'm really just trying to meet your needs tonight, and then Thank for you. the takeaway, you know, I can dig into what charge point revised. Um, I can, as I said earlier, I know all the contractors that do this kind of work. We work with all of them. So I have no problem unless Carl has, a, or any of you have a specific contractor you want to work with, that's your call. No, no. So you would arrange the contractor? Or? I can definitely match this project with any contractor that would be interested. That would be great, because that's, yeah, that's be where great. the project stalled last time. What I don't do is I don't say, go talk to him. I go to him and say, here's the project, here's what we got. Do you want the lead and then marry them, so uh -huh. to speak? If that's useful, that's how I like to operate. So we get a bid from them through you? No, directly no, from directly, the contract. Directly. I, I yeah. step back and say, okay. no, he's just he a the conduit. He's setting up the relationship. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Yeah. So, is, any other direction from the board? No, I think that's great. Well, thank you for taking thank the time. You. Thank you. And yeah. thank you for coming in on your vacation. Yes. No worries. Glad to do it. Okay. All right. That's very nice of you, because if I was on vacation, I would not. <laughs> well, thank you. Right. You're the chair. And he, but, he's, but he's nice and you're not. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's what this Thank you. Really nice of you. <laughs> Uh, no, that was a good discussion, actually, because I wasn't really sure what was going on. Now I know a little bit more about it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I was under a misapprehension of what had been going on for a while. Yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Um, tobacco license for Plainfield Co-op. Here we go. Winooski Valley Co-op Market. And we just got to authorize Rosie. If you're okay with them selling tobacco. I'm surprised the co-op would be selling tobacco. Yeah, you, you usually made, um, you usually abstain. Uh, Don't you not? Or we even voted against it or before. something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the request for sale of tobacco. Second. See, are we approving the request, or is this like the liquor no, license where we authorize no, the we authorize the to move it. Yeah, okay. And any further discussion? This is where you say something first. <laughs> <laughs> tobacco kills. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then you say, I, just, I don't like them selling we're, tobacco. We're, we're, all, we're all in agreement. Yeah, tobacco kills, and yeah, it's a small agreement. business, and they are making their decision on how exactly. to serve the community. And, and they're making business. their decision because yeah. they've got to make a go of it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, no further discussion. Then all those in favor, please say aye. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll say aye. You'll say aye? Okay. Yeah. So the ayes have it. It's unanimous. They appear to have it, and it's unanimous for the minute. All right. Um, so let's talk about the Hudson House, because I did have a long discussion with Guthrie about it, because I didn't realize the town lot was so small, 60-something feet by 100. So when I realized that, I'm like, oh, Jesus, that makes it really tight for us to do anything down there. So I talked to Guthrie, and he's kind of like, you guys really, really should make the decision to take it down so we have got some room to do what we need to do. And if we're not, if we sell it as a house, it's going to make it really tight down there for potential some town operations down there, mm. a building. What is it that we need to store down there other than the sidewalk? Well, because we wanted to build a building that was big enough to store some of the stuff that may not fit inside up there for the winter. Or okay. stuff that you want to keep on this side of the town? Like the sidewalk? Plot? Well, the sidewalk thing is the only thing that really comes to mind. That's the only thing, but... Yeah, that has to, 
has to be in town. Yeah. But uh, there were some other items that Guthrie was talking about that would be nice to have in cold storage and inside. So we were thinking of building a simple structure that, was, that could be bigger than just the tractor thing for the salt or sand. Well, or 60 by 100, there. you should be able to build a... Yeah, but you know, you're going to be right up against that garage, too. Is there any thought of using that as a, a road to get access to? The cemetery? Like, yeah. Yeah, there was that, too. We thought about that a while ago. Bruce and I thought about that. So I don't know. I, th I think we'd be better off to take it down and use it as a town asset myself. It's just too tight. My problem is the amount that we're going to have to expend to do that. You're talking probably for the time you do yeah. the asbestos abatement and everything, I bet you're talking seventy to 90000 bucks. Well, I'm not so sure it's going to be that much, but it's definitely going to be significant. It's going to be a sum of money. But I, I, don't I think we're going to have to do any asbestos abatement that I have, and it's not cheap. Yeah, I, I, I've from done what I was told there's asbestos in the siding, asbestos in yeah. the roof, yeah. asbestos in the cellar. So yeah, there's it's asbestos. not it's not like it's one concentrated area like in the cellar, where you could go in and say, okay, we'll do it this way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just. Can we get an estimate? Uh, did we get an estimate on that? Not the abatement. Not the abatement. All we got was uh, the approximate yeah. uh, areas where there was the space right. that we had to. I, I realize it's going to cost us money to take care of it, but in the long run, it's better for the town to have that whole site available for town operations in the future. Because I just think we're going to be shoehorned in there and we'll regret, regret it in the long run. I mean, maybe not in the short run, but in the long run, we, we need places to operate out. Just like the town property that, that property that we bought on the old Pro Farm, man, we used the heck out of that. I mean, we bought it because potentially we could build a town office there. And it seemed foolish to um, not buy it, and we bought it and we sold it off the rest of the land. It's worked out really well, but we have a huge pile of gravel there now, and they use it all the time. That makes sense. Yeah, but we didn't foresee that at that point. We just realized that it was a good idea to have that site for a town office. So I'm saying I don't think it's a good idea to sell the house off and just be left that little skinny lot, so small. Mm. And we did talk about the advantages of having one more affordable house right in the village. I know we did, I know we did, but it's gonna, I think we'll regret it in the long run. And as we look to the future, that's my thought. And Guthrie was in 100% agreement. He was like, no, it's, it's gonna be too tight down there. To build a building, then you're right up against that garage. It's only 60 something feet wide, you know, it's going to be shared access. It just sounds like kind of a nightmare to me. What about using the land where the gravel pile is more? Is there room to do more there? To build a building? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, we're Same. kind of saving that for potentially a town office. Yeah. That was kind of the thought. We don't have much money invested in that site, so right. it's a really good spot. But we're, we're just investing in a garage probably this year, so town oh, office know. will be some years down the line. What's that? Town office. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely, some years absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have the spot if right. we wanted to build it, and we right. are using it, and yeah. we don't have hardly any money into it. So, yeah. so what do you want to do? If it was me, I would get the building taken down. That's just the way I, how I operate. I like to think of the future, and also I like space. The is we can't leave it there. We have to take it down. Well, yeah. we can sell it. I mean, that's what we're talking well, about. Well, that was the option. There and sell yeah. it. Uh, the option is. I mean, the thing there. it is, it puts it back on the tax rolls. Yeah. Right. Some maybe some affordable housing. Yep. To yeah. me, that's how. What's that? Pieces what we're gonna we're going to gain. Yeah, yeah, we are, yeah, right. I think I think Zoe would want to have a, be part of this discussion. Okay. We can put it on. But what we could do is get an estimate for the asbestos and also yeah. an estimate for demo. And then we'd have a more accurate right. idea. Of we what can we're do that. About. Yeah. I'm not opposed to And then that. we have a bit more accurate idea of sure. yeah, what we're talking about for cost. Okay. Yeah. It would cost some money to fix up that site, but mm -hmm. it'd definitely be a nice asset for the town. But anyway, 
So why don't we do that? Okay. Let's get some figures together and then we'll know. Okay. Um, so the next thing on our agenda is the treasury report. And select board signature required for the updated rec board policy, which we already passed, but we just have to sign it. And we have that here, which I can pass around. This one. Is that the one? Rec board policy? Yeah, but I've got a, another, I think I have another copy here, don't I? Yeah. No, yeah. you don't have a copy. I'm just showing you. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, it's right here. Nope, that's the that's minutes. Maybe that's the one that you're scribbling. Anyway, uh, what else do we have? We've got the warrants. Do we have any treasure report, Jen? No, I've got one here. The auditor has finalized yeah. uh, the yeah. auditor is here I don't know if you've got today. What's that? The auditor was here today and tomorrow, so July is not finalized yet. Okay. Yeah, I did. I'm looking. I'm wondering if it got put in my packet instead of yours. Yeah, I don't know. I thought I saw it. Maybe, oh, maybe it's in here. Here we go. It's right here. Okay. Yeah, it's just clipped together. Um, so there's really nothing to report on the treasurer report? Not yet. Okay. And so I can just pass this around the right here. Of course, all the sign because we already made the motion to do it. Uh, right here, select board chair. No, 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 this is in here. Oh, no, no, it's right here. I got it. No, it's this one. Right here. Yeah. I'll just pass this around. Oh, Zoe, Tom, Tom Scott, I'll give you a quick. Okay. Uh, all right. So we have warrants, which are right here. Let me pass that down. There you go. Uh, did you want to give your report, Jen? Sure. So the updated EMFB interlocal agreements in the packet, it's also online, yeah. as well as the lease we found. Um, so we made the updates that we discussed, so I would just say, and I also sent it to the EMFD chief, Albert, and also the Cala Select Board. So just let me know if you have any additional updates. And I have two things. Okay. One, um, do, could we discuss either now or at some point when we want this to start? Because it's now dated as starting July 1st, 2024. I believe, um, and you know, obviously we want it to start sometime in the future, like, I don't know, October 1st, to give us all three institutions time to agree and sign on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then could we get, before the next time we talk about this, could we get a, a, a packet on the website just with everything that's referenced in there so that we can take a look at everything as a whole? Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Because so, most of it's been posted in, in the past, but if we can just get it all in one place, uh, that way we can make the comparisons that we need to. Great. Thank you. Um, continuing, uh, Dodge Road residents requested two culverts. Um, so the road crew is currently doing two grants and aid projects first, so they said they would get to that in October. Coburg Pond discussions delayed to September 9. And then as far as the culvert uh, replacement, um, we have Sanders Circle and Sodom Pond projects. So um, for both projects, the abutters need to be notified and address that. Um, so we do have Jim Barlow working on that. And also we have the Sanders Circle RFP out for bid. And we received one uh, back from CCS Construction. And the next meeting, we'll, we're booked to select who we're going to choose. Oh, okay. Good, good. And in that one we got back, it says that they can do it this year, correct? Right. They were available really soon. Okay. And then they gave us that, well, that to me is the key. Oh, that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who was it that gave um, the bid? 
CCS. CCS. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Good. That's good. Are, are you done? Yep. Could I just say one other thing as long as we're talking about roads? You and I talked about this briefly after the um, discussion. Of oh, the yeah, yeah, right. right. Uh, but, and I didn't put it on the agenda for tonight because I thought with the other thing it might be long, which I was wrong about. But um, I went to a meeting in Middlesex a couple weeks ago about uh, roads and rivers is what it was um, billed as. A select board held it and they brought in a bunch of folks from the state and the local roads program and uh, CVRPC and, and so on to talk about just how to maintain roads for the future. And they've got a roads committee, like it's like our resilient roads committee, uh, but with four subcommittees on it that are, are doing some really good thinking. So I thought it'd be good for us to hear about this. And I thought I'd just um, present what I heard there and maybe see if somebody from Middlesex wants to come over. And Ella Chaplin, our representative that we share with Middlesex, she's really interested in what the state can do to help us out yeah, sure. on any things like that. And there's a proposal from CVRPC to get a mutual aid set up for their member towns for road work. So in case of a storm where you suddenly need to bring in people from Plainfield or Callis to work on our roads or for us to go help them, that you don't have to negotiate the costs right away, that you, you have that already set up in the mutual aid agreement. Uh, so that would be interesting to bring in um, our cool. friend from CVRPC again. So uh, I'd, I'd like so to bring that up at a future future meeting, maybe next meeting if we... Kind of like what power companies do. Pardon? When you need, when you, when you need power, yeah, when you bring exactly. in Greenmouth to help Alweck or whatever. Yeah. It's, an, it's a great idea. Yeah. So that's uh, CVRPC for the, for mutual, the mutual aid. aid. Yeah, yeah, and cool. then Middlesex, who they have come? Um, I, somebody, right? I, I can get out that list. I've got it right here. They had um, a river scientist was giving a presentation when I came in, and she'd been giving an earlier presentation, but they had a whole bunch of people. Um, and were, were they, weren't they putting dollar amounts to certain locations, it seemed like? Oh, they had um, calculated how much the storms of last year, at least, had cost. Oh, them. okay. And it, it was huge. Yeah, it was huge. Right? Yeah, uh, but we had um, Stacy Pomeroy. She's a river scientist. Was there? Ruben McMartin. We had him here to talk about tra traffic calming, so he was there uh, from CVRPC. Todd Eaton is a branch manager for Vermont Local Roads, and they also had Mike Klein, who's a retired river scientist. Huh. And then their their road foreman. Oh yeah. Well, if we do something like that, we should do it on a non-hearing night. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not that the hearing is going to take that long, but it does suck up time. Right. Right. Okay. Hopefully, get more people. Yeah. Mm. It's a little disturbing that we didn't have more people, at least on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's. Well, it's expensive, it, it, and it's people expensive. should know what they're voting on. Yeah. That's right. But, and by the way, there was there was a, there was a question on: Is there going to be a backup generator, Ron? who's not on the Zoom anymore, put in the chat and I didn't get a chance to notice it. Ah. He asked, is there a backup chat? That's generator? a good question, actually. Yeah, that's a good question, yeah. So let's make a note of that. And I don't right. know who Ron is, but he was one of the people on Zoom. He's not on anymore. Okay. Yeah, we Possibly should find Ron that out, Ron Koss is who was on Zoom. So, okay. But we can find that out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so anything else? You want to do that once? Yeah. Yeah. Right. The warrants. So. Okay. Sure. That's in the select board memo, yeah. And the rec board policy wound up somewhere down there. Everyone signed it. I gave it to Jeff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Oh. Okay. It's just here. Yeah. Other than the addition that we just made tonight to November second, that looks good. Oh, this is the one we're supposed to sign, not the one I fished out. What the hell is the signature page? This is a different one. Should we sign this one or what, Jen? I have another one here that yeah, says original to sign. Same thing. So. We can sign this one. <laughs> we'll sign them all. Well, we yeah, might as well. Yeah. I, I don't know the difference. I hope but. they're identical. Here. 
That's the one I looked at originally, and not the one that was in my packet. You mean the one that says original to sign? That's the one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Whoops. Okay, I guess that's it. I hope we adjourn. I think we do. Second. Oh. Uh, I was in favor, please say aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Eight thirteen. Okay. Yeah. Recording stopped.